Hey everybody, it's Dave Becker. We're coming to you live from Milwaukee, from, from McHenry, Illinois. I'm not sure why I said Milwaukee, but we're here in McHenry, Illinois, and um, we're going to be doing some fun painting today. And um, as you see, I have a bunch of new things here today. We're going to be practicing a little bit with my new gear. We got two new cameras. We got a whole new setup. And so if I screw up, and that's why I'm laughing, is because all this stuff is new, and so. We're probably going to screw up a little bit here today. Um, it's week nine, and I have a few things I want to tell, tell you about. One of them is that um, you can go to my website. Uh, I've had a lot of questions from people wanting to know how to get to my website or how to get my newsletter or anything like that. So what you want to do is you can go over here to my newsletter. I'm just going to show you my, new, my website. Go to beckerart.net, and you can see everything there. I do a daily painting every day. Um, I've been putting up to kind of fund my my studio here, my classroom to try to sell my daily paintings. On the right side, you see my Facebook buttons, my Pinterest buttons, my Instagram, and what is that, YouTube buttons on there. That's where you go get to get to those areas. Way down here, you can go to um, the shop and you can shop my brushes down here. But way down here in the bottom is where you get to my newsletter. This is where you get my newsletter if you like. Uh, you just sign your email address there. And then you also put in your name, they send you an email and you're all good. And um, so uh, we do want to get back to um, painting. So, so what we're going to do today is a scene that we, um, I pulled off of pexels.com. It's, uh, it's a website that you can go to and pick up free uh, images by photographers, some really good photographers. So what you want to do is um, go there, pick up something. You can thank the photographer you'd like. You don't have to, but um, it's nice to and I actually, um, the photographer I put on my Facebook page for the painting we're painting today. So let's just get right to our painting because uh, you don't want to see me anyways, right? <laughs> so let's get to our painting here. And um, I already put masking fluid down. And so you can do that. And again, don't worry about the time it takes you to do this painting. Um, just do it afterwards. This, this will be on YouTube. It will be on this Facebook page again. And so you can just do that later on if you don't want to, if you just want to watch, that's fine. I do want to go to this, um, the scene for the value study. And so what I want to show you here is that um, I did a value study for this one because I want to show you how to simplify a scene. In a scene like this, everybody, on, a lot of people on Facebook go, wow, that looks like a very impossible scene to do. You know, a lot of drawing, a lot of things going on in that scene. But if you simplify the value pattern, like I did here and you see on the screen right now, um, compared to the photo, it simplifies it. It take, breaks it down to a simple value pattern. And that's what, why you do a value pattern. I usually don't do a value pattern for myself because I take the photograph and then I just look at it and I squint my eyes and see the lights and darks of it. I don't look for the colors, I just look for the values. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be doing this um, painting, but simplifying the values. So the drawing now is another thing. When you're doing the drawing, of course, the drawing has to be number one. You have to have, be a good drawer. And if you can't draw this the way you see it on the photograph, then at least trace it. And what I like to do sometimes is I, I take um, this carbon paper, it's a sketching paper, and you can put it on, like I'm working half sheet, I couldn't do that for this. But for a student, if you're not good at sketching or putting it down, put down the black part down onto the paper like this, and then take your reference material and hopefully you can blow it up like an office max and you can then just trace it. Like you have to have a good, pretty good photo for that though. If you don't have a good photo and you're tracing a bad photo, of course it's gonna be a bad painting too. So just, just let to warn you on that part. And so, um, so that's how you get the drawing down. If, you, if you're not a good drawer, if you can draw, then it's great to practice and just try to put it on there on your own. Okay, so um, materials. Everybody always wants to know my materials I'm using. And so I'm using Stonehenge Aqua. Stonehenge Aqua is this paper. It doesn't, it comes in like pads like this, but it also comes in full sheets. I'm using 300 pound for this cold press. They do make hot press. And um, it's a great paper. It's uh, less, less expensive than like an Arches. Um, I like it because it doesn't absorb as much as Arches. Our Arches is a really tough paper, but it absorbs a lot of my paint. And I like to use this uh, Stonehenge because it kind of sits on top and it's easier to erase things. So that's the paper I'm using. My brushes and brushes you saw on my website, um, they're for sale. They're um, Holbein Golden Brushes with my name on them. And um, 
we'll start with those. So those are my brushes. Holbein paints, of course, you see that logo all over me and everywhere. <laughs> uh, that's because I love Holbein. Holbein is a great, great company that makes some great products. All their products are very professional. And so um, that's what we're using today. I didn't, um, I washed my palette up here, but with the colors, I just put a little bit of, before you, um, before I went on, I just sprayed them a little bit just to wet them up a little bit. You don't have to even have to do that really. You just go right in there. So we're just gonna go right into this. And um, every once in a while, I will look up to see if you have any questions, um, but pretty soon we have to do this in an hour. And this is a little bit more complicated. And again, these paintings are more for the intermediate um, painter it's for my class that I teach every Saturday morning. But um, I'm trying to come up with a class for beginners and that's coming up hopefully in a couple of weeks or so. I still have got a bunch of things to do to figure things out, but that'll be coming up. So to get going on this one, um, the pencils on there, I penciled it up. I put my masking fluid on there. I noticed I didn't use my need a rubber eraser again. So you want to take that and run it across paper, get rid of the graphite. So I really lightly put this down like this. And so see, we're just going to go across that and it makes your hands dirty and it makes the things dirty, but then it picks up the mess or it picks up the pencil lines that you don't want there. And so I just want to go back really quickly to the value study. And I just want to show you what you have to do. So in my value study in the sky and through the car and through the street is the light, right? So that's the light areas. So that's what I'm going to be picking up first. And see, and the photograph, the white is not white. It is a little bit of a color in there. So, but in the value sense of it, you have to go for the values. The values are number one. You have to kind of figure out what the value pattern is. Because if you don't have that value pattern, then you don't get the nice composition in designing your painting. So <clears throat> what we're going to do now is we're going to just wet the area, the lights. I'm just going to put in the light areas. The sky is the light area. Now I did put the lines in there, you know, from the, from the car, the trolley car. Um, but I can just go right over them because that just later on, I may just use those as the, I won't even paint them. I'll just use the lines of the pencil as the lines for the, for those lines. So I just go over everything, right? Because this is the light and the sky, you could actually keep the sky white. If you'd like, you don't need to go right into the other parts. People ask me why I wear gloves. I just started getting used to them because I've been washing my hands so much and then um, they're actually can feel kind of comfortable. And it also keeps my hands clean. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's the reason I'm wearing them. No other reason. I normally don't, but it's been fun. To, 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 like they're powdered, so they're keeping them nice and soft. So you're gonna put a little bit of, we're gonna go with the value or the colors and my color scheme is gonna be grays and then um th there's a lot of yellow in this so yellow and purples right that's compliments so my class knows that how much i love purple so <laughs> the sky is going to have a little bit of purple in it going down to a little bit of yellow and yellow i have a lot of orange in this yellow <laughs> i have a lot of yellow in this orange but, you know, you get, let me get a cup of coffee here hold on let me get a swig of coffee <gasps> it's early morning it's 9 30 come on so here we go with a little bit of yellow. So if somebody just said that it's a great reference material. The reference material I picked up again on pexels.com. There's other other place called unsplash.com. And there's another place, what is that one called? Uh, I forget, but um, there's a bunch of places online that have royalty free images. And all you have to do is thank the, you, you can thank the photographer. You don't have to, but I kind of like to thank them just because it, it, this was a great picture. A lot of times it's, it's hard to find great pictures. And so um, the photographers and these sites, boy, they it's nice that they're doing this. They let you use them. I mentioned it in my Facebook. If you go to my Facebook page and look at the sketch and the photograph, I, the lady who took the photo is in there. Her name is in there. So here now I got the sky, right? Just put that in there real quickly. I'm gonna get a little bit, it's supposed to look rainy, right? So how about we just let it wash down? That'd be kind of fun, right? Watch this, I'm gonna pick it up a little bit. Can you see that? I'm just gonna splash it a little bit and let things run down. I'm trying to make it you know, messy. I mean, when it's raining, it's raining, right? Look at that. So we bring it down here, let it run down. And like I said before, this is more advanced. It's more advanced classes. Um, 
but for a beginner, you know, try it. It's, you know, I, when I was in school at American Academy, I was with a lot of really good artists. And, um, you know, it's better when you work with really good artists that do really complicated things, because as a beginner, you learn twice as quick, I think. So it's really good to have that happen for you. So go ahead and try it. You know, you don't, you may not get it perfect, but that's okay. Just get in there and give it a shot. Now, if you don't know what watercolor is and how to use it, you know, wait for my beginner's class and then we'll teach you how to use the watercolor and all that kind of things. But I'm not going over that kind of stuff in this class because this, again, is for more advanced, a little bit more advanced. So I'm going to write in here and I'm going to leave the white. I did mask it off this. I masked off the person, the guy here, because that's kind of white in this little section right here where the lights are. I'm going to leave that alone and leave that white of the paper. Now, right away, this building is a little bit darker, so I'm going to take some warm colors here with the purple. And I'm just going to go in here and get that get that building right away, because that's a light building, and it goes from a light to a dark, right? You can oh, you can. I'm pointing to my sketch here, and you don't see my sketch or my value studies, but right there, you see how that kind of goes from a light to a dark. So I'm just going to go in here and I know it's leading into the sky. Don't worry about that. It's, it's my light. I can actually pull it out there a little bit too. It gets a little bit too much. And I'm floating my pigment. Remember, that's my thing. Float your pigment. You wet, put down the water, and then you float the pigment right on top of it. All right. So we're going in here. I'm looking for values and I'm working my light colors first. Work your light colors first. This building in the back there is light. It's going to be lighter than in the photograph because in the photograph, it's kind of dark, right? But we don't worry about that. We, we're going to make it lighter and push it back. We're the artists. We decide on what happens in the picture. That photograph is great as a photograph, but we're doing a painting. We're not doing a photograph. I'm using a person's photograph, but I'm making a painting out of it. And so I'm going to go right over here. This trolley is yellow and this big part of the picture is going to be yellow and purples. And so, that's the center of interest, this area. I like to call it area of interest because it's not this, a single thing. It's an area. The whole area here is going to be your center of interest. That's how come I like to call it area of interest more than center of interest. And then bring it right down into the, into the street. And the street is dark, so I'll do that later. I'll get the darkness of the street later. I'll get some of the lights in there now. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of dark in here. And so this one, actually, the background is going to be warmer than the foreground. I'm going to keep the foreground kind of the purplish grays. Again, this is wet. And you notice I'm not painting pieces. I don't paint pieces until I get to the detail. Right now, I'm painting areas, areas of light, light and dark. If I don't get those areas of light and dark, then all that detail is not going to do uh, any good unless I, unless you do it where you're taking it and doing it really, really detailed right from the get-go, and you know that everything is going to be detailed. Then yes, then you have to do it that direction where you take everything. This guy kind of messy up here, so it's still wet, so I can take a little bit out of there. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you're probably going to hear my microphone is a very sensitive microphone, and you're going to hear everything um, in McHenry, Illinois. If you, every street car that goes by, you're going to hear. Um, nothing I can do about that. Um, it's a very, very good, I guess, um, microphone. All right, so we're going down here, and again, this is my middle tones. Nice thing with this new system I have, um, with this, my new system lets me, when I do a use the hair dryer, I can just shut off my sound completely, so you won't be hearing any loud noises from my hair dryer today if I do use it, which is a nice thing too, which I will probably use because this one is, is pretty big. I work in half sheet on this one compared to the quarter sheet that I normally work with. You guys can do it a quarter sheet. Don't worry about doing it this large. Um, it's a lot more drawing, you know, for you guys. And I know there's a lot of drawing in there, but again, if you're, if you're having problems with the drawing, do it with, um, you can, you can trace it because this is a lesson. I mean, you want to learn something. And one of the things that you need to have is good drawing. So whatever you can do to have that drawing be really good on your paper. It's very important, very important to get a nice drawing in there. So this is about my lights and my middle tones. I don't have any dark darks in there yet. I'm not doing the trees. I'm not doing, I'm just kind of putting in my lights. And as you notice, like I said, my, it's going to be orange, orangey yellow to um, purple. 
for my darks and a little bit of blue because it is kind of orangey and um i'm waiting for this thing to dry over here and this i'm gonna make darker so it'll look just like blurry a little bit in there and it's nice to have things blurry i don't know if you look on some of the websites of some of these artists these um like albero and all these guys that do some really beautiful scenes like this um they let things all bleed together and that's what's that's fun about that let me just switch a second here see if you guys got any questions um, Becky asked um, what kind of pencil, the darkness of the pencil. I just use the school pencil, like a number two. And I just put that on there. And I, even that puts enough of the, um, the lead onto it. And so that's where I'm going to use my needle rubber eraser to go across it. Any questions here? The yellow I'm using. The yellow I'm using is um, permanent yellow light. The orange is um, permanent yellow orange. And that's brilliant orange. And the... Lavender, I'm using it, has a little bit of white in it. And I'm just stalling so you guys. That's come. I'm answering the questions. I'm letting it dry a little bit. And let's see, any other questions? Hey, Marilee. Hey, Dale. Um, Dale's doing a demonstration, I think, at noon. He was, does one at noon, I always watch. Um, so go ahead and watch um, Dale, Dale Popovich from the American Academy at one time. But he does workshops also up at Dillman's, which um, I should mention right now too, is that we're doing a I'm doing a a workshop come up coming up, and in June, the last week in June, it's still a go, and um, they're going to practice social distancing in this workshop, and we got it all planned. We're going to have like nine people in the one room. Each person has a ten, an eight foot table, I think, and then in the back room. Um, we're going to only allow, I think, 15 people within two rooms, and there's going to be, be fun. So we're going to try to see how that works out in June. So last week in June, sign up for it um, at Dillman's.com. And um, you can go to my website, and I have a list of all the things I'm going at, too. All right. Then I'm just going to shut you off for a little bit, uh, the sound. So I'm going to use my hair dryer real quick. Just hold on one second so you don't hear this, because otherwise you're going to... Okay, I'm back. It's probably not all the way dry, but um, it's a nice new feature that I found out on this on this new equipment I'm using that I can shut you guys off or shut me off so that you don't have to hear all that stuff. So what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna go in the back and work our way forward. Uh, my middle, this is my lights and my uh, my middle tones, and so now come my darks, right? And if I look at my value study, let's go back to our value study real quick just to show you. Just want to show you that in the value study the trees the lamp the side the people and like inside the window of the trolley car those are the darks so that's what we're doing now but we still have to do the background um softness of those buildings in the background so we'll get that to that too so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and um see this background in here what i want to do is i want to make that not quite as important as in the photo see on the photo it's like right up there and very detailed and I don't want that to happen. I want that to sit back there. So what first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it the color of what's back there. In the foreground, we have darks and we have these orange. So back here, we have the violets of the sky. So that's what that building is going to be. No matter what it is on the photograph, I'm going to use the color from the background, which is the purples and such. So it's grays. Even though that roof on that building, which I've got right here, is red. And I can put a little bit on there later, but right now I'm just going for a a pattern of light that's a little bit darker than what's in the foreground. I don't care what the color is on the photograph. That's not what's important. You're the artist. You decide on what um, these pictures are and what kind of wash you're going to put down. That's why you do the value study. My value study says that these buildings are way back there and they shouldn't be too dark. They shouldn't be contrasty. 
They shouldn't be bright with color so that it comes forward. I can put some on there later, but right now I wanted to say back. And these windows are lit up in back there, and I can still do that. I can pull some of the light out of that. So see how they just, they're gonna be pushed back a little bit, but just enough to see that the buildings are there. And then we can go right into our tree. Our trees are gonna be our darkest dark over here, so we don't, we don't have to worry about that. Later on, we can just put that in there. It's kind of like a suggestion of buildings back there. You don't have to do everything on there to make it look like the, you know, you're not doing a photograph, you're doing a painting. The top part of that building, if you look on your photograph, the top part of that building is dark roof, right? I can make it a little bit darker, but again, I don't want to make it so dark that it becomes too, comes too far forward. And now let's put a little red in there on the rooftops. We can put a little red, but just enough to just say, yeah, those are red rooftops, but stay back there. Don't come forward. Okay, so there, a little bit of it down there. And this is still a little damp, but that's okay, because it's floating, the pigment's floating, you're doing fine there. Now I did put masking fluid and lights and stuff, so that I don't have to worry, I can go right over that stuff. And of course with your, with your um, I can tell it's messy, <laughs> so it's still wet. <laughs> but um, let's go down and let's see where's the dry part. Let's go to our, our trees. For that, I'm going to use one of these bristle brushes. This one, John Lovett gave me. Um, he taught a workshop in my class, in my studio here. And they also make them inch and they make them an inch and a half. Um, but they're great for making foliage. And so I just dip in there. Actually, John uses this thing for his whole painting. I, I just can't believe that, but it's cool. So now we're going to go in and I know there's green leaves on these trees, right? But because we're doing a painting, that is very, it's supposed to be kind of rainy, um, downplay the color. And so I'm not going to use a green per se, like it's going to be a bright green. I'm going to use a gray green, very gray green, almost to where it's like a bluish, bluish purple, maybe even almost like a black. And so I'm dipping into um, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, I mean, Prussian blue, a little bit of permanent violet, and maybe a little cronacridum gold, which with the blue makes it kind of a green. And right away, you're just going to go in there and get my edges of the trees. And some of it's going to bleed in because it's still wet underneath. But that's cool now because now I can have some of it be soft edge and some of it hard edge. So it's all timing. Um, a lot of things has to do with timing and watercolor. For the demonstrations, you know, I have to just plan for how I would do it. Like normally I would just try to make sure everything is totally, totally dry. But for this, for demo purposes, sometimes you just do things out of order just because things are drying faster or you can do this right now and get both effects hard edged and a few soft edges go around this trolley car even though the rooftop of the trolley car is dark right now i just want to get, get the look of the being of the trolley car so you can see that i can still put the dark in there later with a different color maybe even now there was a um we call it a different um a light street light there so what i'm gonna do is just pick that out I'm just going to pull that out like this with the brush. You can always lift up from the picture. It's not like people think that watercolor you can't lift up or you can't erase and you definitely can. It's not that, um, I guess you don't want to, you try not to do that things, but you can. It's not that hard if you let, let yourself do some of these things like use white or black or erase, erase an area. I know in schools, we've always been taught not to do all those things is using white and stuff, but this is an advanced class. That's for beginners who should be learning how to do certain things with the, with to make your darks and stuff, but this is more of an advanced. And so do whatever you need to do to make the paint look good. So that sign there, I'm going to have a little lights in here and there's a car back here. Cars, people hate drawing cars, right? Especially a lot of my ladies in my class, they don't like drawing the cars. Um, they're basically rectangular cubes and you have little angles on them. So practice them and just do them separately, like from a painting. Don't sit there and try to do them in the painting. If you don't know how to do them, take a separate sheet of paper and just practice them. Um, I never understood why people don't practice things. They just go right into their painting. You know, you can't, you can't do something if you haven't practiced it first. 
these actually, these paintings that we're doing should be practicing for you. They shouldn't be actually paintings that you're going to go out and sell. These are ones that you're going to try to learn something from. I'm doing these demonstrations just to hopefully teach you something so that you'll learn how to do things. And so now we got the whole foreground is dry. So I'm going to go right in there and I might, might as well do my street right away. Actually, let me just do this side real quick since I have this color right here anyways. Sorry, I haven't looked up for a while to see your questions, but like I said, if I don't get to, to the questions while I'm doing the demonstration, I will always answer afterwards. So just wait for after the after the demonstration. I do have to get it done in an hour. I feel like I need to get that. It's one of those things. I always try to get it done in the time that I say. Learn that through working at an advertising agency. If the project had to be done by a certain time, you got it done. Otherwise, I think you'd probably be fired. <laughs> So here we go. There's a couple of trees in there and see how I can just put other colors. Once it's, once I put down the wetness and again, this is a bristle brush. I just dip it down. I dipped into some brilliant orange here. All right. Maybe real quickly, I'll look up here for a second just to see if you guys have any questions. Hold on. Ooh. Hey, Barbara from Toronto. Hope I can get up to Canada this year. I've got relatives up in Ottawa, and um, I know that my Vermont workshop has been canceled, but I still have one in the Thousand Islands area workshop that hasn't been canceled yet. So hopefully I'll be up there, up in Ottawa anyways. And I think I'm going to be doing one in Ottawa uh, for Holbein at the, I forgot what the name of the store is. It starts with a W, I think. So I'm going to go here. See, I'm going with my darks now, and I'm just putting them in there. This is dry. The surface is dry right now, and so I can get some hard edges first. But then once it's wet, that's when I then um, flow some pigment into that area. See, it's dry, so you're going to get a hard edge. That's a good thing. That's how you get hard edges when it's dry. And then um, you start putting in your darks. And the thicker your darks are, like I said last week, the thicker your dark pigment is, the thicker it is. And it's when it's put now into this water, it's going to stay where it's at once it's wet like that. Because you're using a lot of pigment, it's almost like dirt in a puddle. It's going to stay there because there's so much of that dirt, it's not going to bleed all over the place. Now these lines that you see going in there, I'm going to wipe those out later. I don't need to do that. With this paper, I can wipe out really nice and easily later on. I don't have to sit there and worry about trying to go around each one of those lines. I can just wipe it out. The simpler, the bigger the washes, the better they look. If you can get nice, big, beautiful washes, that's what makes them look nice. It's when you're doing little detail and they don't get, and the watercolor doesn't get to do its thing of floating. I like to let the pigment float. And so all this orange is going to reflect in there, right? So let's put some of that into the water right away. That's going to reflect into the dark shadows. There's even some lights in there. And later on, I can pick that out too. You don't have to make it everything that detail in the beginning. You can always go back in later on. I know people think it's a one shot deal. The, it's the best when it's one shot. If you can get everything in one shot, that's the best. But sometimes it's just too many things to make it, everything a one shot deal. So this is gonna be a post right there. Here we get this. Got two people here. Look at that, we're gonna put that in reflections. Gonna... And also um, this, the way I'm doing the street wet is the same way I would do water, like in a, in a lake. It's the same type of thing. It's reflections. Now there's no waves, so the reflections will be a less wavy, if that makes sense. There's not gonna be any waves in this because it is a street. Though if it's so much rain that the wind is blowing and it gets a little ripple, that happens sometimes. So that's cool. So put in the little waves like this. Or the street, this street looks like it's cobblestone. So actually look at this, I'm gonna put little dots, like little cobblestone dots in there. And that's a reflection. That's not his legs yet. This is going and go right to the legs. I put mascot in for the guy. She has red and blue. And so she's a little bit of light and dark compared to that, but we can figure that out later. Right now, I'm just going to get the reflections of the street real quick. And then look above what's above it, A lot of times that will reflect in there. So here, this person right here, we'll put him in there. If you know what the color you want to use there, maybe I'll put him in a little bit of orangey red in this top. So I'll put that right there. This person has a white top. And so, um, I'll do a little bit darker around her, and then her legs are dark. So pick up some dark. 
push that into the water. This is wet, that surface is wet. So you need a lot of pigment so it doesn't bleed all over the place. Know how much pigment you have in your brush compared to the water that's on the palette or on the paper. Here we're gonna do a little dark back here just to kind of go right over that car. I'm working big areas. Later on, I'll work the detail, the fine details. Oh, we still got half an hour. Oh, I'll slow down. No. And so now remember that wash was really looking like really dark. Remember how dark that looked? And now it's nice to have a, it would have been nice to have that light there. But if I put that dark of the building there, it's not even going to show really. It's almost like it's just blurry. And because it's raining or it had rained, it just seems like misty. It seems like a mist. So that's cool. So don't have to worry about that. So maybe in the background here, let's work the back way forward. And let's put a little bit of detail, not contrast, just details. Just using a little bit more, a little bit more contrast. And then these will be done. I don't, I'm not going to touch that back there once these are done. And these windows, this is actually dark through here out here. Let's make that dark real quick. I'm blocking this. You can't see. Now we're going to do this. But windows again low key back there and that and i should use my quarter inch brush because when this i call this my window brush because it's a quarter inch quarter inch and it's if it goes sideways it makes like a perfect window see like it's the same size and just go one one brushwork downwards and since some of those are lights are on i'm just going to use like a yellow and then um after that once it dries i'll put some darks in there too not that dark. All right, here we go. Let's do that a little bit. Get that background done. Move on to the next part. You know, a lot to do here. It is definitely more complicated because of how much subject matter is in a scene like this. This is a city scene with a bunch of things happening, but you got to break it down to the lights and darks, the big lights and darks. Again, when you go back to my value study, you look at it and that's what you want to represent that look in your value study. Now this has these little lines here. I'm just going to kind of go down. I know it seems like it should be more um, details, but it really shouldn't because it's going back and there's a little bit more contrast. And as it goes back, it kind of disappears. Here we go through here. Some windows up here. How detailed you get is up to you. Some people like to get really detailed to where it's photographic perfect. That's up to you, that's fine. Um, it's gonna take you a little bit longer than the hour that I do these in, or 45 minutes with, with all the talking I'm doing. But um, it's all good. And try, if you like that, so there's certain people that cannot paint this loose. They just find it too sloppy. And there's some people that um, can't paint tightness. Like I cannot paint the tight because I just don't, I don't have the patience to do um, that much work on something. <laughs> okay, I'm lazy, okay? <laughs> so here we go. We're going to go down this way. See, I like to do a window like this, one brush stroke. If I got to sit there and, you know, labor away at it, I'm not going to be, that painting's never going to get done. <laughs> So here we go. We're going to use the background color. Remember, the background is less um, vibrant. So I'm going to go back to my, my little purpley lavender kind of color for back there. So that way it pushes back. And see how this building on the top here is farther forward. That gets more contrast. A little bit more contrast there. And I'm using my permanent violet for that. I have black that's peach black and I have Prussian blue. And if you just let it float after you put down the water, then you can let your pigment float in there. And um, right away, I'm gonna get some of these fine details because I can right now. It's like darks are details. When you get to the dark stage, that's when you put in the details. And how you, again, how you put them in is up to you. How you, do you like them really tight or just like loosely like I'm doing right now? 
It's just that you already know the values of everything, the large values, and so now details give you the look of the painting, what's happening, and what, it, what the object is. And if I go on to hard edges, I just put a little wash over that. Details are not kind of fun to watch, I find too, when I watch demonstrations. Details are not the fun part to watch because you're sitting there and it's like, how many windows you want me to see me do, right? Okay. Look up for a second just to see if you guys got any questions. Hold on, we're down here. Wow. All right, so let's get back into the street here. Little washes in there. Around this person, as I said before, I'm going to make this a little bit darker here. A little negative painting of the body part. And here we got the stairs going up. So if there's any problems you see with the um, setup that I have here, I'd, I'd love to um, hear your suggestions of what you liked and what you didn't like about my new setup. Um, it's a whole new way of um, doing these things. I've been, I've been waiting for these cameras for like about a month now. Finally got them. This morning um, I came in and I found out that everything I did yesterday to practice was all gone. I didn't save it right or something. And then so I had to redo it all this morning. But um, it's like a whole plays out the whole scene plays out and so i gotta make certain scenes and stuff but if there's suggestions you have that you want to like or just put them on there put them in the comments and i'll look at them later again this is a whole new system so if, it, if it didn't, it's not working i will get it working at least by next week for sure sorry i can't look up and look at all the um, suggestions or anything like that or questions but again i'll get to those this afternoon actually okay so those are big areas see the big areas are almost done so now let's go into our light areas or our small things like people and the, and the trolley car and everything because those are what's important now so i'm just going to work from the left down to the right right it doesn't matter you can go from right to left whatever way from back to front you know, that's not, there's not an exact way you do these things. It's sort of like you just, you got your big areas, your big washes. Now it's that when it comes to detail, it's a little bit easier because you just pick any way you want. You know, just go in and just find an area and just start detailing it. It's those first washes that are really important that you get the whole contrast thing going. That's more important than these details. Details, yes, they are important to show what the actually objects are, but they're just kind of, details and it takes a little bit longer to do them because they are details and see how many more times I can say detail <laughs> okay this is get some contrast back here from these cars I'm gonna work from back to front I think that'll be my favorite that'll be my way of doing it Each painting is a little bit different. I don't really look at the painting before I do these demonstrations and how I'm going to actually run through it. Um, I just go by the value sketch because if I start nitpicking exactly what's going to do, I'm never going to be able to do it. So I just kind of go in and then I look at the value pattern and I go for the big lights to the small darks. Every time I do a painting, that's how, that's how it goes from big to small, from big to detail. Hopefully I'll be able to get the classroom up open again pretty soon. That'd be kind of nice to get the students back in here. I'll have to clean up the place a little bit before I they go in. It's pretty messy right now. I have a bunch of stuff in here. And so here I'm working the trolley car. I'm not sure why. It's probably the last thing. That's the most important part of the whole scene is this trolley car. And so again, orange and the purples, right? So let's get a little bit of orange in there. Blues and purples, right? That's what we want to get in there. And here's a little mirror. Okay. 
Um, that's not terry cloth. This is just a regular towel, a regular towel on the side here that I'm using. Somebody asked the question if it's a towel, it's a, it's a cloth towel. I just like to have it because I can just throw it in the washer. I have a bunch of them. And I just throw them in the washer. I got it from Goodwill. Just went there. I think it was a dollar, a big towel. And then I just, um, just wash them when they're done. And I, and I like them because they absorb and I can just tap my brush down where the paper towel, you know, it's not as squishy and doesn't suck as much in. So I kind of like the paper, I like the paper, the um, towel better than paper towel. Detail. I just put the sign in there. There wasn't a sign. I just decided, you know, in Europe, a lot of times there's these signs. It just gives it a little look. And over here, you got a lot of dark. We got this lamp right here, this lamp post. So let's go in there. See how my pinky's down? My pinky's down. I get a nice straight line. Don't pick up. Don't pick up. Don't pick up. Don't pick up. Boom. One shot. Don't sit there and try to stop and little by little. Get in there and get it done. I'll use my rigor brush. For the lamp. Now you gotta watch your finger though. If you're putting your pinky in, a head, in something, then when you put it back on the light area, make sure it's clean. A little calligraphy in going on in here. See that? A little bit of swirly whirlies. I mean, it's okay to do them now. I mean, this is you're at detail stage, so it's darks and get it done. As long as like, you know, when you get to a certain point, it seems like you should be in big areas, but you can also do little things here and there just to get those things on there. And let's see, make some of these a little bit darker. And now there's no light in here. Later on, I'm gonna scrub those things out. I'll show you how to scrub those out. Now we just gotta go in here and get our, our small details. Most importantly, when you're doing a scene like this, I know a lot of you had told me when you first saw this picture, like, oh my gosh, there's so much, so much in there. Yes, there's so much in there, but you can break it down, break it down to big areas. Try not to do all the little details. Try to think of how I can do the bigger areas first. You know, the big areas, get those in there. And then depending on how far you go with it, some people would like to take it to a really, really fine point where it's everything's in there, like the photograph. And there's some they will well, just do it like in the three blotches. You know, it's all good. You just have to decide how far you want to take it. How what kind of style do you use? Here, a little, a little bit more contrast. It's not that much. It's just a little bit more, just so that it kind of looks a little bit more detailed. A good thing to do too is um, if you want to kind of figure out what kind of style you normally have or what you kind of like, go on like Pinterest and start type in like watercolor, you know, watercolor design, watercolor portraits, watercolor whatever, and um, look at look at paintings. I mean, there's Pinterest. My God, you can see so many different kind of styles, and it's fun to kind of see. And if you like a certain style by a certain artist, uh, just copy his work a little bit. I, I don't mind if anybody copies my work because I don't even have a style. I don't think yet. <laughs> But um, just try it, copy it. Now don't try to go and sell it as your own, but um, just use it, use it and try to learn from it. It's great that there's so many different styles out there. I love seeing all different styles and sometimes you can incorporate some of those styles into your style. Even if you don't have a style yet, you probably have a style, but it's just a, more of an amateur style right at the moment because you're learning how to do um, watercolor later on little by little the more you do the more you pick up and the more workshops you take and you learn from different people you start creating a, a certain look that becomes your own because you'll incorporate those those learnings that you've gotten from everybody else so i always encourage my students to take a lot of different different um stu teachers and pick up from everybody pick up all the techniques from everybody I picked up so many things from so many different artists. It's just fun. 
And the mentors, of course, were Irving Shapiro and Robert Wade. Uh, they Both of them helped me out a lot when I was a student. Robert Wade is from Australia, so if you've ever seen his work, beautiful work. And he actually, at the one time, when he wouldn't do workshops here anymore, he gave me his workshops. And uh, I remember the one in Maine, Rockland, Maine, that was really a lot of fun. Actually, I took his workshop in Rockland, Maine, and um, we met Jamie Wyeth one evening in a in the local the local eatery. The, the Wyeths have an island out there on near near Port Clyde, Maine, and they come in every so often to eat. And so they um, we caught him one day in the Ocean House. Ocean House in. So now I'm doing the people, I'm doing just gestures. Little gestures here. And um, am I looking at the photograph? Not so much. I'm kind of making them up. Um, some of them are going to be a little bit lighter, darker, you know, just varying it up. I don't want to make them too weird that you look at that area too much. If I put like, let's say a really bright color there, then your eye's gonna go over there. So I don't want to have that happen yet. Um, these two people in the front there, I may do that for them. And the people in the way the distance back here, they're just gonna be like the color back there. You're not gonna start adding color back there because otherwise my eye goes back there too far, too fast. Keep that pushed back. I almost got too much contrast here almost in a way. So I'm gonna tone that down a little bit. I'm just going to put a little bit of detail in there. And he's got little reflections too. So this guy's standing there. Also, if you are having some issues with, I know last week some people had some issues with seeing it like not placed right. I place it, I'm trying to place it exactly where it's uh, on my site. I see it exactly. So a lot of times it is your machine. Like if you're using an iPad, you may have to turn it sideways or um, get a different, a different effect on your iPad or whatever you're using. And just look into your system because it will, it's definitely not my system because um, everything's new on my system and I practice on it for quite a while. So. A lot of times people don't understand that it, um, like if it's slow and freezing, I'm still going here. It's I can tell it. And if it freezes, I will, I will let you know. Well, then somebody's asking a question here. Hi, David. I tuned in last late. I'm uh, wondering the brushes, the fur brushes, these are just, um, bristle brushes. The brushes that you can get like at Menards, Home Depot. For like 50 cents <laughs> and this one that um john lovett gave me i found and actually i give a lot of my students that one i think it's like 50 cents so they're, they're fun to use though if you watch john lovett ever do it man it's amazing what he does with that brush And speaking of that workshop that was here in my studio, um, that was actually a, a workshop that came from Frankie Johnson over in Lake Zurich and her place. Oh gosh, how can I forget her place? Uh, Main Street Gallery, Main Street Gallery. Um, she has some great classes there too. If you ever want to get some great classes and some great workshops, head over there. And I think Dale even teaches over there. Dale, who's going to be um, teaching later on there. We're doing a demo at at noon, I think, on Facebook Live. So just click, keep on staying on here, and you'll see him there. And again, both of us have things up at Dillman's, so sign up for our classes up at Dillman's. Dillman's is a super, super great place if you want to ever go take a great workshop. I love it up there. I go up there twice a year. Hopefully this time I'll be up there twice still. I'm going in Ju um, July and then back, I think, up there and I don't know, I have to look online. <laughs> Their 
August or September. I should look these things up, huh? Right? All right. Just look it up on my website. Everything is on my website. Just look on there and you'll find it. Let's see how much time we still have here. We got 10 minutes, right? 10 minutes to go. So let's see. Let's work on our trolley car here a little bit and make it glow around this light. Nice little glow. And back there, I'm going to do a little bit. See any more questions? All right, so now for the trolley car, this is going to be, there's mask weight on there right now, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here. Just give some detail, but then I'm going to make it like, I'm going to wet it at the same time. So first wet it, it's a little bit of color. I'm going to put some orange in here and then go around the light that's going to be lit up because I'm going to take the mask you know, fluid off. But let the paint float into that area because it's all pigment. It's basically pigment. And the thicker the pigment is, the less it's going to float towards that area. But see how now it looks like it's a little bit brighter in the center. And as it goes away from it, you can plop some more darker colors in over on the sides. And we'll bleed into this area. So that's that's controlling your watercolor. You got to control it. And it's nice and bright. And so why not? Let's take some of that same color and now put it right into the street, right? It's reflecting into the street. And look at that. I'm putting light on top of dark. And it is opaque. Yes, as you see, I do have opaque colors in my in my palette. But just I won't be able to submit to um, some of the watercolor societies. But other than that, it should look pretty cool. Just put a little lights in there and here I put a little light. I also have white in my palette. See a little bit of white. And if I see that I didn't want to use masking fluid to get some of these reflections, I can just put a little white in there. It's just to enhance it. It's not to try to get away from you know something that you did wrong. You know, that's why a lot of times people use white, and that's the reason I think schools had told us to not use white is because we would use it to kind of cover up a mistake we made. So what you want to do is just use the white as an enhancement to the painting, not as a deterrent or trying to try and get or to use that to look at something because that looks terrible if you're using it to try to fix something. All right, so now these people in the front here are very important, and let me just shut you off for a second again, or shut myself off for a second here, so I can dry this art. The masking fluid, you want to make sure it's totally dry before you before you go and um, take off the masking fluid. Let me just shut you off for a Okay, we're back. Now, uh, somebody had asked what, what I, how would I apply my masking fluid. Well, I'm hoping I have a pen that you can also put the li little lines in if you need to. Um, it's a masking pen by Holbein. But I've been, for this one, I didn't do any lines, so I use this rubber brush. It just um, brushes that is, it's like a, basically rubber. And it's kind of like I just point with it and poke it. And, there's, and um, Holbein makes a masking fluid um, that's Pretty, pretty decent. And I like it's a little light and it actually repels the paint. So it'll show like, so I can tell what is, what is um, done down with mask and what isn't. So real lightly, I'm just going to take this off now. There's one right here. And I, what I like to do is just little brush strokes like this. A lot of times you have to watch out though on certain papers, this paper and sometimes will rip if you go too fast. And so you just have to watch yourself do it really slow and don't, never put it on the night before. Um, and just let it sit there. A lot of times it won't, it won't come off. Or it'll come off, but it rips your paper. And so here, we're just going to go in there and get these lights in there. 
so that's still wet. Also, you can use your fingers. Sometimes, actually, a rubber glove works good because it's rubber on rubber. This one doesn't want to come off here. Come on, there we go. Okay, so there we go. And then what else we got here? I think. Oh, there's some spots back here. A lot of times, I, I used to be a time where I used to never use masking fluid, and I didn't like using it because I felt it was like a, a way of cheating. But it's a great material to have because sometimes you just have to go through these big areas, and to do those little things and go around them is just insane. So just use the masking fluid. It's fine. Now this tree got a little bit of a little dark in here. So what I'm doing is I'm wetting it, and I'm going to float some light color on top of it. See, what you can do is you can put water down. Once you have water down, then you float a lighter color on top of it. It's kind of a little trick. It's sort of like you can't put it on thick, or you can put it on thick, but see, it'll still look transparent if you float it, if you float the pigment in the water. And actually what I can do is I can even use my the John Lovett brush again. I can just kind of poke down at it and just let it float inside that wash and give it a little bit more texture, a little bit lighter almost too light, but just, and again, if I made it thick, then it'd be too much. It would look too much like it's like an afterthought. This looks like it is just blended into, it looks like it's a soft edge, wet in the wet. So everything's still good there. Okay, a few more things here, and then we'll use the, the sign. Branches. Oh, I forget these people are here. Better hurry up now. What do we got here? Three or so, three or four minutes. That's fine. These people right here. What does she got? On? She's got blue on. I made her red. She has a coat over her arm. Looks like then blue. You do what you want. Don't have to copy the photograph to a T. You do what you want. Know your subject matter too. It's like know your subject matter. And if you take your own photographs, it's the best usually if you can get out there and take your own photographs. Yeah, I'm right over it. That's the best. Knowing your photographs and taking shots that you like, it helps out your painting and drawing so much because it you can put feeling into your paintings when you know what the subject is and. I've done a lot of street scenes, a lot of Chicago scenes. That was my thing at one time. Lately, I've been doing the military scenes of the people, and that's been kind of fun. I'm still doing that. I'm probably going to have to delay it one more time, the actual exhibition, since we've got to close everything down. But sooner or later, I'll have the exhibition, and it should be fun. And I'll put a little bit more street here. Now that we took the mask right off too, I gotta make sure I put some more color in some of these lights, just so it makes sense. Cause you don't want everything that you had on there. The masking fluid meant something. There was something on there, like a light pole or a light in the street. And now this little lamp, put a little pet in there. I know I still have to do the lines. I could leave them like that, but I'll do the lines with my rigger. and be the last thing I do. I'll be doing it in a second. So we can make this up. Uh, there's a, looks like there's a manhole cover right here. Let's put that in there. There's the manhole cover. <laughs> All right, so we got the rigger. The rigger is the brush to do these lines. And position yourself so that you can do the line in one shot. No going slow. Like here, there's a line going right there. So take it, start, and go. Don't stop. Here we go from here, back, go off the page. Start small, I come over here. Trolley car has a line on it. And find my pencil lines. And then these pencil lines will erase. So later on, I can go back in there. So the line that goes right through this part. 
And I notice there's little spots for my fingers. Know what those are going to be? You got it, birds. A few birds flying around in the city. Definitely pigeons. Maybe there's someone sitting up here, right? Little pigeon sitting up there. There we go. Again, the lines, the pencil lines will erase. That's like I don't want you to use too hard a pencil line either. Don't use a really hard and scribe it like with a H, like a five H or something. That's too hard a pencil because it'll scrape the paper and then you won't be able to get that line off. But if you take and just do a nice soft two, number two, just a regular two pencil, school pencil, that's fine. Some more birds. And I think, let's see, let me get some blue in here because I like this little bit of blue I have right there. So the driver on the inside has got a blue hat and he's got a little blue on there. Oh, and I, I told you, I forgot, forgot to tell you how to do the erasing the lines afterwards. So the street lines, see how there's some white in there? I'll take my big brush, which has a really fine, fine point here. It's going to take it across this paper and it's a little bit hard to do, like if you do it with a arches this paper is nice because it's a little bit not as absorbent so a lot of this paint sits on top and if i just take my brush across it like that and take some tissue paper and then just dab it it comes right off and it's not so vibrant either because sometimes it's almost too vibrant if you use masking fluid it's like too harsh this is just enough to make it look like those lines going across pull it up for you a little bit there I'm basically, I'm taking the paint off the paper again. And with my brush, it's very pointed. My one and a one quarter inch brush is very pointy. And then there's a line that goes this way. Watch this. I'm just going to go in here and just kind of bring those out. And then there's the lines. Actually, there's some dark lines for the track of the, in the trolley. So get all those in there. The light that's in from the trolley itself, the headlight, we're just going to put that and just watch this. I'm just going to rub it out. You can take a old oil painting brush. I know Dale has one that he talks about. He's uh, He's got an old oil painting brush that you can take and you just rub. You can rub out areas. All right there. I think that is about it, all right? Got my gloves so I can take off the tape. I think we got everything. Anything else that I need to um, do on it and stuff, I will be posting this on Facebook or on YouTube again, the whole video. I will show the picture. This paper, this picture will not be a, um, a daily, a daily um, painting that I normally sometimes use. But um, every day I post a painting, a daily painting that I do. And let's see, take this off of here real quick. There you have it. And let me just go to this scene right here. So thanks again, guys, for coming up this week. Next week, I'm not sure what we're going to painting. Again, if you guys have any kind of ideas of what you want me to paint, um, I'm still getting the beginner's classes going. I'm still working on that. But uh, thanks a lot again, guys, for um, showing up. And I hope this worked, this um, technique, the way I've been doing it today. And we're going to try to make it even better and better every week. And so thanks again this week. Um, thanks for joining me. And... Don't forget to watch uh, Dale's on at noon. So take a look at his site too. Again, thanks a lot, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.